Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. In the meshless name of Yahoshua Mashiach, this is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham, and we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the word of Yahweh, ladies and gentlemen. This has come out of her, my people, broadcast with your host, Reginald M. Graham. And we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just a voice crying in this end time wilderness, preparing the way of Yahweh, making straight paths for our Messiah, Yahoshua, Mashiach. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that verse is being fulfilled in your very ears on this day. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this broadcast is not for the faint of heart. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring the truth raw and uncut. If you are a truth seeker, you have tuned in to the right broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. We don't beat around the bush. We don't chase rabbits. We let the chips fall where they may. And once again, we thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us this day. Well, we're going to get right into this broadcast uh, this evening. Ro Roman Catholicism is the oldest and largest branch of Christianity. There are more than one billion Catholics worldwide. The Roman Catholic Church is led by the Pope. The Pope rules the church from Vatican City, which is a separate country inside Rome Italy. In this video, I want to address several heresies of this most influential institution. And ladies and gentlemen, there are many heresies, and that's not an understatement. Ladies and gentlemen, the Messiah or anti-Messiah facts for inquiries. Pope Paul the six following the footsteps of the predecessor, Pope John the 23rd, has ex extended a worldwide invitation to non Catholics to return, as he put it, to the Father's house in Rome. Courtesy visits to the Vatican by leading churchmen of different denominations, conferences, and conversations between Roman Catholic priests and Protestant ministers and the present ecumenical outlook. All points onwards. It is in, in the light of fact that we can determine our duty without knowing what a return to Rome involves as we take but a step in the dark. The following facts put in question forms should prove helpful. The Virgin Mary, do you know that the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception, that Mary herself was born without sin, was only made a dogma of the Roman Catholic Church by Pope Pius the Ninth in the year 1854. That the apostles of our master Yahoshua Mashiach never taught such blasphemous doctrine and that early and that early fathers Chrysostom, uh, Eusebius, Ambrose, and Anselm clearly teach in their writings that Mary, like every other human being, was born in sin and that such outstanding Roman Catholic theologians as Thomas Aquinas of Bonaventure and Cardinal Cajeta opposed it and also Pope Gregory the Great and Innocent the Third. Mary herself acknowledge her native salvation for when she said my soul does magnify Yahweh and my spirit have rejoiced in Elohim my Savior. Luke uh, chapter 1 verses 46 to verse 47. Well the Bible says ladies and gentlemen we all have sinned and come short of the glory of Elohim. 
David said, in sin did my mother conceive me. He said, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me, ladies and gentlemen. We were all born in this world with sin. Amen. Only Yahushua, the Bible says uh, that we have a high priest that cannot that can be touched. We have not a high priest that cannot be touched by the uh, our infirmities, ladies and gentlemen. Scripture says he was tempted in all points as we are yet without sin. Yahoshua was the only one, ladies and gentlemen, that walked this earth without sin. So the Roman Catholic Church teach this dogma that Mary, ladies and gentlemen, was without sin. And they continue to call her the Virgin Mary. But we know that Mary, ladies and gentlemen, uh, was not a virgin. Glory to Yahweh. She was not a virgin. That the dogma of the assumption of Mary that Mary's body and soul were taken up into heaven and that she was crowned queen of heaven was proclaimed a dogma by Pope Pius XII, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible tells us that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh. In the year 1953, ladies and gentlemen, this is when Pope uh, the Twelfth proclaim this dogma. The Bible says in John uh, 3 and 13, Yahushua declared, and no man have ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So Mary did not, ladies and gentlemen, ascend into heaven and was crowned queen of heaven. In the writings, The Glorious of Mary, by Colonel Legree, whose writings at the time of his canonization, canonization were declared to be absolutely free from error. Mary has given the place that belongs alone to Yahoshua Mashiach. The following quotations prove, prove this quote, and she is truly a mediator of peace between sinners. And God sinners receive pardon by Mary alone, unquote. Page 2 to 83, quote, Mary is our life, Mary, in attaining this grace for sinners, restores them to life, unquote. Page 80, he fails and is lost. Who has not recourse to, to Mary? Page 94, the Holy Church commands a worship peculiar to Mary, page 130. Many things are asked from Yahweh and are not granted. They are asked from Mary and are attained for, for her. Quote, she is, is even queen of of hell. Listen to this. She is even queen of hell. Not only is she queen of heaven, the Roman Catholic Church, amen, teach that she is queen of hell and sovereign mistress of the devil. She's the sovereign mistress of the devil, unquote. Page 127, 141, and 143, quote, the whole trinity of Mary give me a name above every other name that at the name ladies and gentlemen, of Mary, every knee should bow of things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, unquote. But the Bible tells us in Philippians uh, 2, verses 9 through 11, wherefore Elohim also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yahoshua every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Yahoshua Mashiach is master to the glory of Elohim the Father. The Roman Catholic Church have elevated Mary to a higher position, a high, higher status than that of the Messiah, Yahoshua. Page 262, the rosary. Do you know, one, that the rosary was 
unheard of for over a thousand years after the time of the Messiah, that neither the apostles, the martyrs, nor the so-called church fathers ever used the, the rosary. Sinners then prayed to Yahweh in the name of the master, Yahoshua Mashiach, and not to Mary. The rosary has 10 prayers to Mary for each one directed to Yahweh. Muslims had the rosary long before the Roman Catholic Church. That, that Peter the Hermit invented it in the year 1095. And the Roman Catholics believed that Mary appeared to St. Dominic a Spanish monk in the year 1215 and promised him that she would let no one go to hell if they would pray the rosary once daily. Let's now look at the scapular. Do you know one that, that every good Roman Catholic wear next to his body a piece of brown cloth called the scapular on which are pictures of the Virgin Mary during the dark ages that the Church of Rome adopted this idolatrous charm according to tradition Mary appeared to Simon Stalk an English monk in the year 1287 and told him to wear the scap scapular and by doing so, it will keep him safe from all dangers. And the first Saturday after his death, Mary came and took him out of purgatory. If Mary can take a man who wore the brown scapular out of purgatory the first Saturday after he dies, why pay masses for the soul that, that in the glories of Mary, the rosary and the scapular lead poor sinners to forget Yahoshua, the only savior of his mother Mary. It was the Messiah who died for our sins according to the scriptures and who rose again, not Mary. The worshiping of Mary is not found in the Bible. But the queen of heaven, Ashtaroth, is found in the Bible, who Judah and the heathens worship. This is who the Roman Catholics really worship. The apostles and the early church knew nothing about the worshiping of Mary. Ashtaroth, Easter, she has many names, uh, ladies and gentlemen. She was called Isis. Um, she has many names, ladies and gentlemen. She's called Diana. She's the queen of heaven. Different cultures call her by different names, but she's the same individual. This, this, this goddess, ladies and gentlemen, she is called in the book of Jeremiah, the queen of heaven. Mary is called the queen of heaven. So in actuality, the Roman Catholic Church worship Ashtaroth, ladies and gentlemen. They worship Asteros. It has given to the creature the glory that alones and belongs to the creator and therefore this is blasphemy. The scripture says, ladies and gentlemen, that they worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forevermore. The apostles in the early church knew nothing about the worship of Mary. It has given to the creature the glory that alone belongs to the creator. And this is blasphemy, ladies and gentlemen. With the Marian dogmas of 1854 and 1950 and the worship and adoration given to Mary, the Church of Rome cannot be called the Church of the Messiah, but the Church of and for Mary. 
For Mary is their mediator, their life, and their hope. The church of Rome is really Marion's church, not the true faith, ladies and gentlemen. It is really the faith of Marion. 1 Timothy 2 and 5 declares, For there is one Elohim and one mediator between Elohim and man, the man Mashiach Yahoshua. Mary is not man's mediator, nor is she man's intercessor. She is not man's go-between. Mary is dead, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says that the dead knoweth not anything. Mary is dead. She's in her grave and she's waiting, ladies and gentlemen, for the resurrection. She's waiting for the day of the master. She's waiting for her son to return and take the saints of Yahweh back to glory. So Mary is dead, ladies and gentlemen. Mary cannot hear your prayers. You, you, you're wasting your time praying to Mary or any dead saint. They cannot intercede for you. They cannot answer your prayers, ladies and gentlemen. Mary is dead. She don't hear your prayers. Glory to Yahweh. Now, let's, let us examine purgatory. Do you know that the doctrine of purgatory was not established until the year 593 when Gregory the Great was Pope and that it was not proclaimed an article of faith until the year of 1438 by the Council of Florence and later confirmed by the Council of Trent in 1548. Quote, but does any intelligent person believe in purgatory? Unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to be an ignoramus to believe in purgatory. You've got to be a buffoon to believe in purgatory. Ask Lorraine Brutner in his uh, monumental work, Roman Catholicism, quote, that if such a place as purgatory is described in the Bible, it would take the so-called church fathers 600 years to discover it and another 1,000 years to confirm it, unquote. Purgatory is a pagan origins. Yes, it has pagan origins. Every religion except that of the Bible had its purgatory. Every pagan religion, ladies and gentlemen, had its purgatory. It is a doctrine most dishonoring to Yahoshua, and it implies the death of Yahoshua did not secure the remission of the whole penalty of the sins of his people, and that each soul must suffer a part of the punishment which is sins deserved by penances in this world and by purgatory in the next. How contrary to the word of Yahweh is this? There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Mashiach that walk not in the flesh, but at the, amen, the spirit. Purgatory has been called a gigantic organic fraud, a scam, and a colossal racket, and the gold mine of the priesthood. Boy, they got billions of dollars from this uh, purgatory, ladies and gentlemen, dogma. Quote, take purgatory away from the Roman Catholic Church, said Dr. Hammond, and you will rob her of nine tenths of her livings, unquote. For Roman Catholic system, page 27, how awful and blasphemous is trafficking the souls of men. What did monstrous delusion, how contrary to the word of Yahweh, come by without money and without price, ladies and gentlemen, Glory to Yahweh. Salvation is free. You don't have to pay 
for salvation, ladies and gentlemen. Isaiah 55 and 1. Popish priests, do you know that there is no warrant whatever in scripture for the doctrine of a sacrificing priesthood? The apostles were never appointed to be priests and that they were never called priests. That the offering of sacrifice had no place what, whatever among their prescribed duties. The only, ladies and gentlemen, matatorial priesthood recognized in the New Testament is that of Yahoshua Mashiach, the great high priest. Romanism analyzed by J. MacDonald to taint the glory in his solvers. Quote, the priest has their power of delivering sinners from hell, of making them worthy of paradise. Look at this blasphemy, ladies and gentlemen. And changing them from the slaves of Satan unto the children of God. And God himself is obliged to abide by the judgment of his priests either not to pardon or to pardon, according as they refuse to get absolution provided the, pen, the penitent is capable of it. The sinners of the priest proceeds and God subscribes to it in obedience. Look at this blasphemy, ladies and gentlemen, to the word of his priest, Christ himself descends on the altar. He comes whenever the priests call him and as often as they call him and places himself in their hands and after having come remains entirety at their disposal, unquote. Quote by Dr. Hammond, in the Roman Catholic system, page 130. What fearful blasphemy, the mass do you know that the church at Rome declares that after the words of consecration are pronounced by the priest, the bread in the wine, the Eucharist, ladies and gentlemen, are changed or transubstantiated into the body and blood of Christ. Now they say, like, this is cannibalism. They say that the, the literal body, the physical body of Yahoshua, ladies and gentlemen, change into the wafers and his blood, ladies and gentlemen, change from that wine, that wine changes to his blood, ladies and gentlemen. The wafer changes to the literal physical body of Yahoshua. This is a blasphemy. This is what the Roman Catholic Church teach, ladies and gentlemen. The Roman Catholic system, page 130, what fearful blasphemy the mass do. You know that the church at Rome declares that after the words of consecration are pronounced by the priest, the bread and wine are changed or transubstantiated into the body, the literal body and blood of Christ. And that of the canon three of the Council of Trent curses all who deny the consecrated bread or wine though divided into thousands of particles or drops to be the real body of Christ. Quote, each particle contains Christ, Jesus our Lord, whole and entire body, soul and divinity, and whatever constitutes a body is bones, muscles, sinews, blood, nerves, etc. Unquote. Generations in Samus 98 and 9 quote that Pope Colossio 
of the year 492 wrote, the bread and the wine retain their nature of bread and wine and the observance of these holy mysteries is only a figure or symbol of the sacrifice of the body and blood of Jesus. Did Dobis notorious and Christos unquote. But the Bible does not say so. Page 46 by Roberto Nesbitt for the dogma of transubstantiated dates from the, the lateral council of 1215 5a. The Church of England in her articles called the Mass a blasphemous fable. They called the Mass a blasphemous fable and a dangerous deceit, unquote. Westminster Confession of Faith says, quote, the popish sacrifice of the Mass is most abundable and injurious to Christ, one only sacrifice, the alone propitiation for all the sins of the elect, unquote. Chapter 29, 5C, the Hildeberg Catechism states, quote, and thus the mass at, at bottom is nothing else than a denial of of the one sacrifice and passion of Jesus Christ and in and, and accursed of idolatry, unquote. Number 86, the mass is the greatest blasphemy against the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work that Satan ever invented. The sacrifice of Christ being of infinite value, ladies and gentlemen, and efficacy, efficacy does not need and cannot be repeated. Now, I'm, I'm giving you quotes. I, I don't use the name Jesus. I don't use the, the, the generic name Jesus or the generic uh, title Christ or Lord God Jehovah ladies and gentlemen but I'm giving you quotes I'm just giving you the quotes from these other people that oppose ladies and gentlemen the Roman uh, Catholic Church teaching and they use these generic names so I just I'm, I'm giving you um, their direct quote ladies and gentlemen verb, from verbatim okay and again Ladies and gentlemen, for sins forever, Yahushua sat down at the right hand of Elohim, Hebrews 10 and 12. Let me read that again. The word of Yahweh declares that after he had offered one sacrifice, this is Yahushua, for sins forever, he sat down at the right hand of Elohim, Hebrews 10 and in verse 12. And again, my Messiah being raised from the dead dies no more. Romans 6 and 9. Number 7, the Ten Commandments. Do you know that in the Roman Catholic Catechism, the second commandment which forbids the worshiping of Elohim by images is omitted? And that the 10th commandment is divided into two to make up the 10, ladies and gentlemen. The, the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church. See, I grew up Roman Catholic, ladies and gentlemen. I spent a lot of my young life in the Catholic Church. And we, they had statues in the church that church we attend. I mean, these statues look actually look like humans. Sometimes it seemed like I seen these statues moving, my friend. But they look so human-like. And you will see the parishioners 
They would go and they would pray to these statues, ladies and gentlemen. They would weep before these statues. They would make supplications, amen, before these statues. This is idolatry. The Bible teaches us that we should not make any graven images or any likenesses of things in the heavens, ladies and gentlemen, the things in the earth and things, amen, in the seas and the waters. We shouldn't do that. We shouldn't make statues and figurines and, ladies and gentlemen, images of angels and uh, of, of Yahoshua and the Father in heaven or dead saints. We should not do this. This is idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. But the Roman Catholic Church, they changed the second commandment. The Ten Commandments. Do you know that in the Roman Catholic Catechism, the second commandment which forbid the worshiping of Elohim by images is omitted. They altered the word of Yahweh. They took it out. Yahushua said, listen, let me read it to you in Revelation chapter 22. They, they altered the word of Yahweh. They omitted a man, a commandment that Yahweh gave us. Here in Revelation chapter 22, look what it says here in Revelation chapter number 22. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us here, before I read, I want to quote a scripture. The Bible tells us, ladies and gentlemen, that heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one jot or tittle of Yahweh's word, amen, shall fail, ladies and gentlemen. And so we are commanded, ladies and gentlemen, to keep Yahweh's word. Now, let me read this to you in Revelation chapter 22, verse 19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, Elohim shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of of the holy city and from the things which are written therein. Not just the book of Revelation, but the entirety of the scriptures. If we remove them, we omit them, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture says that Yahweh will take away our part out of the book of life and out of the holy city, ladies and gentlemen. So we have to be very careful. But the Roman Catholic Church have done it. It's in their catechism. The second commandment, which forbids the worshiping of Elohim by images, is omitted. And that the tenth commandment is divided into two to make up the ten. The Church of Rome is thus guilty of taking from the word of Yahweh and of setting the word of Yahweh aside in order to hold to her idolatry. Never in the New Testament nor in the rest of the Bible are there instances of believers supplicating or praying before statues and images. This is idolatry. Israel got in trouble for idolatry. Amen. Praying and supplicating before idols, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. The church of Rome <coughs> have altered the fourth commandment from, from remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy to remember Sunday to keep it any way you want to. And to remember the feast of Rome. You know the Roman Catholic Church got many feasts, ladies and gentlemen. Feast of Bartholomew, the Feast of Anthony, the Feast of St. Patrick. My goodness. But the Bible does not say so. Pages 50 and 51 by Art Nesbitt. Do you know that, that Peter was never a pope? Peter was a married man, the Bible tells us. The Pope has to live a life of celibacy, which the Bible condemns that practice. Ladies and gentlemen, look what the Bible says. I mean, you, the, the, the Catholic Church is chalked up with heresies, false teachings, and, and false doctrine. Let me read this in the book of 1 Timothy, ladies and gentlemen. 
1 Timothy, let's look at chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, ladies and gentlemen. Now the Spirit, verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now let's look at these doctrines of devils, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking lies and hypocrisies, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. Look at this. Forbidding to marry. Yahweh told a man, Yahweh said that it was not good for man to be alone. And he gave him a help me. He gave Adam Eve, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Scripture say to avoid fornication. Amen. To avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband, ladies and gentlemen. If you can't contain, marry, for it's better to marry than to burn, ladies and gentlemen. Praise Yahweh. What Yahweh joined together, let no man put asunder. But the Roman Catholic Church teach celibacy. For their priesthood. And that's why so many of the priests are perverted. That's why we see all these sex scandals, you know, these priests molesting in these little boys, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Because of their sex, sexual appetite, ladies and gentlemen. And, and, and this is what, what Yahweh have, have, have planned and destined for a man and for a woman to get married, ladies and gentlemen, to be able Amen. To control their sexual urge, ladies and gentlemen. But the Roman Catholic teach otherwise, forbidding to marry, ladies and gentlemen. Many of the priests, they sleep around with the nuns, ladies and gentlemen. They found uh, skeletons of, of infants, amen, under convents where the nurse, where the nuns live. They aborted the babies. These were priests, many of the priests and popes and bishops and cardinals, children, ladies and gentlemen. These women got pregnant and they hid, amen, these babies. Now, it says forbidding to marry. This is a doctrine of devils and commanded to abstain from meats. The Roman Catholic Church abstained from meats on Friday. On Friday, ladies and gentlemen, these are doctrines of devils. Bless Yahweh, amen, for the truth. Praise his holy name. So the church of Rome have altered the fourth commandment from remembering the Sabbath day to keep it holy to remembering Sunday to keep it any way you want it, want to, and to remember the feast of Rome. But the Bible does not say so. Page 50 and 51 by Art Nesbitt, do you know that Peter was never a pope? Peter was not the first pope. They're lying on Peter. Peter is not, was not the first pope, nor is he the rock on which Yahoshua built his church. In Matthew 6, 16 and 18, Yahoshua told Peter, I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Ladies and gentlemen, if the church would have been built on Peter, Yahoshua would have said, upon thee I will build my church. But Yahoshua says, upon this rock I will build my church, that is upon the rock of of Yahoshua, eternal deity. Ladies and gentlemen, the scripture says that Yahoshua is the rock. He is the stone that the builders rejected. Ladies and gentlemen, then the Bible tells us here in 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter number 3, ladies and gentlemen, ch chapter 3, 1 Corinthians, chapter number 3. Look what Apostle Paul a man had to say, ladies and gentlemen, about this. He said in verse number 10, according to the grace of Elohim, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another build is thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds thereupon. For 
other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Yahoshua Mashiach. The Bible says that Yahoshua said he likens a wise man to hear the words, amen, of, of, of mine and do with them. He's like a man that built his house upon a rock. That's Yahoshua. Build his house upon the rock. And when the winds came and the rains of, uh, descended and beat vehemently against that house, that house, the Bible said it did not fall, ladies and gentlemen. But a lot of people building their house on the sand. They building their house, ladies and gentlemen, on false religion, false doctrines, false teachers. Uh, Yahushua said, I liken to a foolish man to hear these words of mine and do it them not. He's like a man that built his house on the sand. And when the winds blew, the floods came, the rains fell, that house fell, and great was the loss of it, ladies and gentlemen. Well, praise Yahweh, amen, for the truth. So yeah, Peter is not a man. Peter is not Glory to Yahweh, amen, the rock that the church was built on. Yahoshua is that rock. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. The Bible tells us that there was a, a man stone, ladies and gentlemen, amen, that that destroyed that image. It was a rock that destroyed that image that Nebuchadnezzar was seen, the golden image. And ladies and gentlemen, it had a head of gold and it had uh, arms and chests of silver, ladies and gentlemen. Then it had a, a, a stomach and lines, glory to Yahweh, amen, of uh, bronze, ladies and gentlemen. And then it says, amen, the legs and the the feet was made out of iron, and the feet was made, amen, with iron mixed with clay, ladies and gentlemen. And this rock that was hewed out of the mountain with our hands, ladies and gentlemen, that's Yahushua. He destroyed, ladies and gentlemen, every one of these kingdoms because his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Yahushua's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom that would never, ladies and gentlemen, come to an end. Bless the name of Yahweh. It's an indestructible kingdom. Praise Yahweh. Amen for the truth. Now, in the year 1870, Pope Pius IX proclaimed the doctrine of the papal infallibility at the Vatican Council. He began, ladies and gentlemen, to proclaim that the popes are infallible. Glory to Yahweh. According to the Roman Catholic Church historian Philip Schaff, delegates representing 80 million Roman Catholics were opposed to it. That 88 delegates voted against it and that over 80 abstained from voting. They teach that the Pope is infallible. He's the vicar of Yahoshua Mashiach. He is uh, Yahoshua on the earth. Not only the representation of Yahoshua, but he is Yahoshua himself, ladies and gentlemen. That on account of this blasphemous dogma, two leading German theologians withdrew from the Roman Catholic Church and along with others who opposed this dogma formed the old Catholic Church. But ladies and gentlemen, this dogma took hold, ladies and gentlemen, and they received it, ladies and gentlemen, as a dogma in the Roman Catholic Church. For the Pope calling himself the, the vicar of Christ showed that he was an antichrist. Do you know that the word antichrist means antichristos is a is composed of Christos meaning anointed or Christ. And the prefix anti and anti means against also instead of or in place of. When prefixed to the name of an individual, it indicates an agent who assumes the individual's 
place and at the same time acts in opposition to the Messiah. Thus Rome herself speaks of antipopes. Antichrist therefore means one who pretends to be a vicar of Yahoshua and assumes to act in his name. But who is at then say at the same time, who is at the same time his rival and greatest enemy, the Roman Antichrist by Fred S. Lee? Drunken with the blood of saints. Do you know that the Babylon that Babylon in the book of Revelation is the Roman Catholic Church? Even the great Roman Catholic controversial controversialists have been driven to admit that Rome fits the description in the prophecy in Revelation chapter 17. Cardinal Bellamine says St. John in the Apocalypse called Rome Babylon. Now these are Catholics exposing themselves, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. These are Roman Catholics exposing themselves. No other city besides Rome, he said, reigned in his age over the kings of the earth. And it's well known that Rome was seated upon seven hills. The scripture says that she reigns over the king of the earth, ladies and gentlemen. And the kings of the earth, the Bible says, have committed fornication with her. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Revelation 17 and 9 declares, And here is the mind which have wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Colonel Boronese and the French bishop, whose sway, both say that Rome is signified in the apocalypse by the name of Babylon, Unquote. These are Roman Catholics, ladies, just exposing themselves. Amen. The great harlot of the seven hills, page 32, by Albert Close. Quote, that seven heads are mountains on which the woman sits. Revelation 17 and 9. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, an abomination of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the martyrs of Yahoshua. Revelation 17 verses 5 through 6. The church of Rome shed more blood, caused more unmerited suffering, inflicted through her inquisitions the most cruel and unspeakable diabolical tortures than any other religion or organization that have ever existed among mankind. For years, Europe was deluged with the blood of martyrs. Her fiendish brutality spared neither age nor sex. The massacres to her account were orgies of sadid sadism sickening in the extreme, no less than 200,000 of Alba Genzies were massacred in France in the year 1212 in the space of three months. The Alba Genzies who perished amounted to over a million. What are the awful carnage by the Duke of Albert in the Netherlands and the hundreds of thousands of victims of the Inquisition in Spain, the fires of Smithfield in London, the strangling, the burning, the drowning of the witnesses of Messiah in Scotland, quote, perhaps the most notorious of all massacres was that which was carried out against the Protestants of France beginning 
August the 24th, 1572, and continued throughout France for five or six weeks, some 10,000 Huguenots of the French Protestants were called, were brutally butchered in Paris alone. An estimate of the number killed throughout the country runs from 40,000 to 70,000. When news of massacres of Protestants reached the popes, they were ecstatic and they rejoiced. They had a tedium song in every church in Rome. And for the massacres of Bartholomew, Pope Gregory the 13th coined a medal with the inscription Massacre of Huguenots to commemorate the massacre. It has been reckoned that up to the 19th century, the whole number of persons massacred since the rise of the papacy amounts to no less than 100 million souls, ladies and gentlemen. Bless Yahweh. Well, we're going to close here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank Yahweh for you uh, listening to this broadcast attentively. And we want our YouTube vi viewers and listeners uh, to subscribe, share, and like. Amen. We also want a man, our TikTok viewers, ladies and gentlemen, to send those comments. Give us your thoughts. Our friends on YouTube, send your comments. Give us your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. We want a man, you to a man, um, subscribe, share, and like. We would really appreciate it if you would subscribe, share, and like. And send your comments. Give us your thoughts. We will really appreciate it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're doing a series on the Roman Catholic Church. We're going to continue on with this series. Bless the name of Yahweh. So we thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again with another message. Amen. From the word of Yahweh. And until next time, may Yahweh continue to bless you. And smile on you is our prayers. Mm -hmm.